I'm so excited. This is going to be so fun. Thank you for being here. So welcome to Choose Your Own Adventure, The Struggle for Security. Meet Hero. Hero is application source code on a developer's laptop. Hero longs to be a real application running in production, serving end users, and we're going to help Hero along the way. So our job, everyone in this room, we're going to help Hero navigate hundreds of CNCF projects, choose which ones to use, integrate them with one another to help Hero on their way. I'm Whitney. This is Victor. Victor and I together host a show called You Choose. So on our show called You Choose, each episode is a different system design choice. Then we gather all the relevant CNCF technology that can do that thing, whatever it is. We invite a presenter on, usually a maintainer from each of the projects, and they get five minutes, only five minutes, to tell us what their tech does. And then the community votes. And whichever technology gets chosen, we build, we build into our ongoing demo. So based on what the community has chosen in our show, we have a demo environment running right now. That demo environment, we have AWS EKS cluster that's defined declaratively with cross-plane resources. We are using Argo CD for DevOps. So actually our application's deployed in the cluster now. And then based on what you've chosen, we have Contour as the ingress. So there are end users able to access our application that's running in the demo environment. So wait. Hero already is running in production. Hero already is serving end users. So what are we doing here today? Well, the problem is, bum, 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 there's no security. So right now, Hero is endangering the users, themselves, and the system. And we need to help. So that's where you come in. So please scan this QR code, and we are going to do live voting during our session today. We're going to go through some different system design choices that will help add security to our cluster. And with each system design choice, everyone in this room is going to vote. And based on what you choose, we're going to build the demo live on the fly with your choices. So let's get started. We're going to go through three different system design choices. We're going to add cluster level policy. We're going to add runtime security. And we're also going to talk about how to manage secrets. So let's do the thing and help Hero run in a more secure production environment. So first up, let's talk about admission controller policies or cluster level policies. We're going to think about Kyverno, OPA Gatekeeper, and Cube Warden. But before we jump in, what is admission level, like cluster level policy or admission controller policy? So as things stand in the cluster, bad things can happen. Our apps can become bloated and use way too many resources, or they might run outdated versions of software, or they might be pulling images from untrusted container registries. So we can add policy to help, help with this. So policy is rules that you can add to your cluster, organization-specific rules that you add to your cluster. So with policy, with cluster level policy, we can add memory and compute limits, or we can declaratively define what versions to run, or we can say that our, our images can only be pulled from our safe internal company registry. So how does it work? When you make a policy, what you're doing is adding configuration to the Cube API, and you're doing that in the form of an admission controller webhook. So at this point, there's nothing running in the cluster. You're just teaching Cube API that when a request comes in that falls under the jurisdiction of this rule, what you want Cube API to do is send that request to the admission controller. So the admission controller is actually a piece of software that's running in the cluster. And it can either be a mutating admission controller or a validating admission controller. So if it's validating, it's going to return yes or no. Yes, you're allowed to do this 
action to this resource, or no, you're not. If it's mutating, it might change something about the resource altogether. It might add labels, inject a container, add memory compute limits. The sky's the limit. But regardless, it's going to return a response to Cube API, and now the Cube API is going to act in accordance with your company policy. So let's talk about the tools themselves. First up, we have Kyverno. Kyverno is a Kubernetes native admission controller. It's made for Kubernetes. And as such, you write your, your policy in YAML, kind of. What you're, you actually are using uh, Kyverno JSON query language, which is meant to look and feel like YAML, but it's not quite. But the idea is, if you're writing cluster level policy, you probably can reason about and author YAML the best of any language. There are lots of other bells and whistles too with Kyverno, but they're not differentiating. So we'll jump to the next one, which is OPA Gatekeeper. OPA stands for Open Policy Agent, and the OPA part without Gatekeeper, just OPA, is a platform agnostic policy engine. So you can use it to write policy for all your entire system, not just Kubernetes specific things. The Gatekeeper part is a wrapper that brings OPA into Kubernetes, so now you can write OPA policy for your Kubernetes resources. Now, with OPA, you write your policy in a language called Rego, which is notoriously difficult to use. So if you only want to write policy for Kubernetes, adding Rego might be adding complexity that you don't need. And then finally, we have Kubewarden. Kubewarden, they were like, you know what? We don't want to write policy in YAML, and we don't want to write policy in Rego. <laughs> and so with Kubewarden, you can write policy in any language that you want, and then that policy is uh, wrapped up, it's compiled into a WASM module, and that WASM module runs as part of your admission controller software. And Kubewarden is a younger project, so it doesn't have as many of the bells and whistles, but it still can do some cool things. So now it's time to vote. These are our choices, and remember, the technology you choose is not the winner, it's just the one you want to learn more about. And please vote, yeah. I'm always happy when it works. Nice, nice. All right, it uh, seems pretty definite. Kyverno it is, let's. Yeah. Victor's gonna demo it for us. Yep, uh, I need my wait, uh, I need my terminal. Okay, let's do this. Uh, full screen, cool. Uh, do you see this big enough? Yeah. yeah, cool. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is copy um, copy a file, uh, this one, into this directory, and I'm going to call it policies.yaml. I'll show you what the file is. And the reason why I'm copying it first is because I have Argo CD here, and Argo CD takes a while until it uh, synchronizes whatever I push there. So first I'm going to push something, uh, and I'm going to push it, right? Now, while Argo CD is trying to figure out and it's deploying this policy, let me show you what I'm pushing there. So policies, uh, no, what did I do? Infra uh, policies, there we go. Um, this is what they defined uh, for what I already have in a cluster. It's relatively simple. Uh, basically, what I'm saying here is, here I have a cluster level policy, meaning, meaning it can apply to any namespace. Um, there is some labels, doesn't matter. What does matter is that I'm saying, hey, if you find a deployment uh, in the cluster and in the production namespace, and somebody tries to create or update, meaning I'm going to ignore the uh, deletion, then, uh, the spec replicas field needs to be bigger than two, meaning that you need to have more than two replicas of the deployment in the production namespace, right? The second cluster policy as well says, hey, if you have something in a cluster, SQL claim, which is a custom resource, uh, in this case created by Crossplane, uh, and you try to create or update, then, uh, and this is now in any namespace, to be clear, then the spec parameter size field can be either small or medium or large. Those are the only three allowed values. And then another cluster policy says, okay, again, SQL claim, whatever that is, but if it's in production, 
then it cannot be small, meaning that cyclic claim anywhere, anywhere must be small, medium, large, but in production cannot be small. Relatively easy, relatively straightforward, right? Now, uh, let me see whether it was uh, uh, deployed. So get cluster claims. There we go. Uh, not yet there. Uh, usually my demos fail uh, later, not this far quick. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me go to Argo CD and see uh, what's going on. This is very embarrassing. Uh, make it bigger. Cool. Username. Username is always the same. It's always admin and always admin 123 password because we are talking about security today. <laughs> so I don't want anybody to get confused. What's happening? Uh, where are you? Where are you? Caverno. Uh, if you fail at the very beginning, I'm going to be very disappointed and this is going to be horrible. Uh, no, uh, there is more. Okay, here we go. Production infra. Let me synchronize it just in case. Or let me uh, stop whatever you're doing. Try it again. Because everything in software is fixed by restarting. Um, <laughs> let's see. How are you doing now? Uh, cluster poll claims. No, I'm an idiot. Sorry for that. It's not cluster claims, it's cluster policies. There we go, it works. Woo! It's a typo. <laughs> That's how, how the world works. Okay, so uh, at least one of the cluster policies is there, the rest is nobody knows. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, copy an application that I created. So uh, I'm going to have, I have Argo CD here. I have CNCF demo YTT. The reason why I'm using YTT is because that's what we chose in the previous episode. I'm going to copy to apps, CNCF, ah, what am I doing? CNCF demo.yaml, there we go. Let me double check what I have in apps because I have a feeling that I uh, copied it twice. I did. Apps, CNCF D, no. Cool, git add, git commit. Uh, <laughs> no. There is a CLI called like that, which I, because of the code of conduct, I cannot repeat what the command was. I'm sorry for that. And now if I go back to Argo CD to speed things up, uh, I should have, uh, have it somewhere where it's up, 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 up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's somewhere. This is too small for me. There we go. Production apps. S refresh. The, it should appear soon. Come on. Okay. Let's see whether it happened. So uh, namespace, ta -da -da, na namespace, uh, A team, I think. Uh, no, production. Production is the namespace. Production get deployments. There we go. My deployment is not there. Now, that's for two reasons. Either I did not do it right, which is one possibility. The other one is that kubectl, kubectl describe uh, cluster policy, cluster policy uh, deployment production, right? Uh, so that's the that's the the policy. And if policy work correctly, it should say no. It doesn't work. I'm nervous. I'm not nervous, but uh, I don't like failing. There we go. Now the application is there. And now, if we take a look at um, what did I want to take a look? Uh, cluster policy deployment production should soon show in events because if you go now to, to this application that was deployed with Argo CD, there we go, there is an error. I knew it. Failed demo. Let's go on. I'm yep. sorry for that. All Doesn't right. work. I'm sad. <laughs> I can figure it out, but then Whitney gets mad at me for not being hey. able to finish everything. <laughs> nah, let's go. I'll figure it out and then uh, uh, deploy. So 
here's the story. If it worked, Caverna would say you cannot do it, and eventually it will work, and I would fix it by putting more than two replicas. To be clear, I don't get mad when his demo doesn't work. She does. Or I would be a very angry person. <laughs> So let's talk about runtime policy. For runtime policy, we're going to evaluate Falco and CubeArmor. So why do we need runtime policy? Well, do you completely trust every application that's running in your cluster? Do you trust your internal apps? Do you trust your third-party apps? Do you trust every single dependency? Do you trust every single process that's running in your cluster? What if one process is misbehaving? Can you catch it? You could if you have runtime security. So with runtime security, what we're doing is we're monitoring what's happening at the kernel level of our host machine. And so we're going to do that on all our host machines. And uh, so what we're looking at isn't even application specific. So we're looking for unknown unknowns at runtime, and we can monitor what's happening, define expected behavior, and then make policy that will do something when something unexpected happens. But what that something is depends on the tool. So let's talk about tools. First up, we have Falco. Falco is a cloud native threat detector. So with Falco, you can, there are lots of ways you can input information for sources. You have a Falco kernel module, you could use Falco EPPF probe, and there are also Falco plugins, like 13 of those that can monitor logs from Kubernetes, say, or from your cloud provider. Now with that information, you can make Falco rules. So Falco rule is a set of conditions that when they're triggered, when they happen, they trigger an alert. An alert really is nothing but a text message that has some sort of priority associated with it. Now there are two Falco sub-projects that help you with your alerts. One is called Falco Sidekick, and that will take your alert and it can forward it to 50 or 60 different compatible destinations, like Slack or your pager, for example. Uh, and then we have Falco Talon. So Falco Talon will take action on alerts. So when an alert happens, you can do something like kill a container or start collecting more information. And that's Falco, it's a graduated project. Then we have the new kid on the block, a sandbox, a sandbox project called CubeArmor. So CubeArmor also monitors your, your host machine at the kernel level, and it does that with eBPF only. You can also define your expected behavior, but then when something unexpected happens, it gets shut down before it actually occurs. So when an when attack is it attempted, it fails, it never happens. And so they, uh, CubeArmor accomplishes this using LSMs or Linux security modules, which are basically provide access control to the, to the Linux kernel. So those are our choices. With, with Falco, something happens and then you can do something about it. With CubeArmor, you can stop the thing from happening. Yeah. Yeah, so please vote. While you're voting, I'm trying to try to figure out why I failed earlier. Just ignore me. Imagine that I don't the, exist. The voting still works on your phones, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. You can Probably. tell. It's a mystery to me what's happening. Which one's winning? Not winning, being chosen. Cubarmer? Cubarmer? What is this? Keep back. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Uh, now slider will fail. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. Q <laughs> armor, okay. Q okay. Um, okay, I will have to fix first something. Okay, Q armor is a winner, cool. Uh, I'm going to remove the policies because uh, uh, the... Um, uh, what did I want to say? Uh, the Caverno is messing up with my stuff, so if it doesn't pass Caverno, um, Caverno rules, then uh, application cannot be deployed, and without application, I cannot show you what's happening with Falco, so I'm going to Cube remove armor. it. Ah, Cube Armor? Was it Cube, Cube Armor? armor? Cool. Uh, Cube Armor, then. Cube Armor it is. Uh, let me see. Come on, quickly. <laughs> 
Okay, this is this is not nice at all. Uh, come on, infra refresh, sync failed. Come on. Ta -ta -ta. You, you stopped por forwarding in your. Ah, I didn't. I didn't. Don't. Oh, sorry. Don't rush me. <laughs> uh, okay, it will eventually work. Uh, okay, okay. So there we go. Probably we don't have policies anymore. I'm going to deploy the application again. It will fail, and then I'm going to cry. Uh, there we go. Refresh. Come on. Uh, da da da. Maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. Uh, let's see. Uh, last attempt, last attempt, apps, uh, CNCF demo, let's see what do I have there, why it doesn't work, it's an application, I'll go see the application, da, 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 da. ah, I know, I found the error, there we go, code, uh, Visual Studio Code, it's DevOps paradox wrong, Git repository. <laughs> Uh, there we go, this will work now, hopefully. Git status, git add, git <laughs> commit, git push, come on, git push, sh, <laughs> there we go. It's, it's not funny. <laughs> not funny at all. Come on. Why? Port forwarding. Refresh. I'm gonna blame, blame Wi-Fi very soon. That's gonna be awesome. Okay, applications. Last attempt. Uh, kill, cube, cuttle, die, bastard, put <laughs> forward, there we go, does it work now, it doesn't, yes, okay, cool, application, is it deployed, please say yes, again an error, <laughs> I don't know, really, okay, I'm giving up. Uh, what, did, what did they choose? Cube Armor. Cube Armor. Okay, I'm going to show you the manifest of Cube Armor and I'm going to sim, I'm going, I'm going to do live illustration of what would happen uh, <laughs> if, uh, if I would be doing uh, what I'm supposed to do. So, here we go. Uh, policies, uh, Cube Armor, here. Here's the definition of the Cube Armor policy. You just define Cube Armor policy, you specify what is allowed and what is not allowed, in this case, I would be saying, hey, you are allowed, um, you are actually not allowed to execute anything in the root directory and any subdirectory of that container, right? So you're not allowed to execute anything except if the process is called uh, slash manager, right? That's the only process you're allowed to run. If anybody enters into the system and tries to run something else, you will not be notified because there is no good reason why you should be notified. Simply that will not happen. It will, it will prevent execution of anything in that container except that specific process. And then if my demo would work, I would deploy that. Uh, and if I would enter into the container, let's see whether something magically happened and it's there, pods. Uh, no, application is not there. My bad. Anyway. Imagine, use imagination, <laughs> that if I, that I was running application, if I would enter up into application and try to execute anything but slash manager, cube armor would prevent me from doing that and my system would be safe and only the processes that are allowed would be running inside of the cluster. That's the sorriest demo you, you ever saw. <laughs> there right. we go, present. We're going to... Talk next about secrets management. Yes. So with secrets management, we're going to talk about three different tools. We have external secrets operator, secret store CSI driver, and SOPS. 
So our hero needs to access a lot of different confidential information while they're running. So tokens, encryption keys, API keys, passwords, all of the things. And a lot of this, all of this, can be managed with a vault. A vault is a piece of technology that stores secrets safely and has an API to interact with it. That's the bare minimum you need to be a vault. A vault probably also is going to do other cool stuff too, like remediation when secrets leak um, and secrets rotation, for example. But we're actually not talking about vault technologies. We've limited the scope of our Choose Your Own Adventure to CNCF projects because we have to limit the scope somehow. And there actually isn't a vault in the CNCF. So the problem we're solving is how are we going to get confidential information from outside of our cluster to inside of our cluster? And that's what our three technologies do. But they all do it in a different way. So we're going to jump right into the tech. So external secrets operator. It's an operator that's running in the cluster and it connects to your Vault API, retrieves the secret, and then stores the secret as a Kubernetes secret and it manages the life cycle of your Kubernetes secret. And now Hero can access it and bump ba da da we have a secret. And so, um, external secrets operator can also do a couple other things that are awesome and uh, alpha right now. But they, it can push secrets, so it can take a Kubernetes secret and push it to the vault, and it can also generate secrets. Next up, we have Secret Store CSI Driver. Secret Store CSI Driver, they were like, you know what? Kubernetes secrets aren't very secret. They're just Base64 encoded and stored in etcd. So let's make a secret solution where we don't use the Kubernetes secret object. So Secret Store CSI Driver, it uses the CSI interface, which the I is interface, it, uh, container storage interface. So the first thing it's going to do is mount a temporary file system pod uh, volume to the pod, and then it retrieves, connects to the vault, retrieves the secret, writes the secret to that uh, file system, and now our contain our uh, application can access the secret as though it's part of its file system. Ba 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 ba. And that's Secret Store CSI driver without using any Kubernetes secrets. And then finally, we have SOPS. SOPS stands for Secrets Operations, but if you call it Secrets Operations, no one will know what you're talking about. SOPS is just a CLI that encrypts and decrypts files. So in our situation, we would have a Kubernetes manifest file. We would use SOPS CLI to encrypt it. And then there's a corresponding decryption key. So whoever we give that decryption key to can read our file, but no one else can. So in our situation, you'll notice the, the vault now is holding the decryption key. It's not holding the secret. So we have the secret in our manifest file, and, it's, and since it's um, encrypted by SOPS, we can safely check it into Git. And then Argo CD sees the change, picks it up, and Argo CD sees it has a SOPS encrypted file. And you, we can teach Argo CD what to do with that file with a configuration management plugin, and then SOPS can get the decryption key from the vault, can decrypt the file, apply it to Cube API. Now it's a Kubernetes secret, and ba 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 ba. Now we got it. So this seems like a lot of extra work for what external secrets operator did. And you know what? It is a lot of extra work. And it's not really designed to be used for this use case. It's more designed to be a lightweight solution to be able to share secrets within an organization or check them into Git without, if, if you're a smaller organization and you don't necessarily have a full featured vault solution. But those are our choices and it's time to vote, pick a technology and watch Victor Baum. Let's do it. Yeah. Hmm? So secret store is SSCSID. Secret store cool. CSI driver. So if my demo would work, I would still not do it. Let, let me explain. SSCSID is absolutely amazing pro uh, product, right? It makes your cluster more secure because it doesn't use Kubernetes secrets, except that you cannot use it. And the reason you cannot use it is because None of the third-party applications you might be using, typically through Helm charts or anything like that, uh, are prepared to use volumes 
attached with secrets inside. So even if you do choose to use SSCSI D or whatever it's pronounced, uh, you're bound to have to have to use something else. And that something else must be either the SOPS or the ESO. And if you choose SOPS, that will not work either, simply because SOPS community made an amazing CLI that does an amazing job with encrypting and decrypting secrets, but never bothered to create a Kubernetes operator, and I'd reject to do anything without a Kubernetes operator. So basically, the only choice here, and I'm probably offending somebody. Anybody from those projects here? <laughs> No? Okay, then you're fine. Um, <laughs> ESO is the only really good choice here if you have to choose one. You can combine all those tools, but if you have to choose one is uh, ESO. And uh, uh, even though I cannot demo it, what I can uh, show you is uh, how that would look like prod um, an application. And I'm going to do that by uh, generating the code of the application first in place, uh, the dash dash, in place, no, let's do VI, why not, Vim. I'm going to modif modify this file here, uh, values prod, so I'm using YTT, right? And I'm going to say um, DB, this is not really specific to it, so insecure, I'm going to say it as, um, as false, actually. And I'm going to generate my Kubernetes manifests. And I'm going to do that by executing YTT. And this is a very long command. Uh, uh, I'm going to put the schema. Anybody using YTT here from Carvel? Cool. Cool projects. Uh, project, not projects. Uh, I'm going to generate my YAML first. That will include everything I need for, uh, y, uh, for ESO. And so that's resources and data. Data values is going to be, no, values file, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be YTT uh, values prod. There we go. And I'm going to output all that to uh, YAML prod, and I'm going to call it app.yaml, right? And just for the good taste, I'm going to pass it through YQ. So this is the, the, the manifest of my application that I uh, generated. And what matters here is uh, where are you, where are you? So this is ingress, this is service. Uh, what did I do wrong now? I'm a disaster, I'm a sorry as disaster. Uh, let's see, uh, Vim, uh-huh. Uh, DB insecure, uh, false, that's correct. Um, let me show you. Uh, how it looks like, YTT resources, deployment logging, certificate. There we go, right? This is basically essentially what you need to, what you need to generate for uh, external secret store to work. You're this is a bit strange because it's YTT, but what really matters over here is that you're saying, hey, I want to get something from my, um, uh, from, from my secret store called production Postgres, password for, for, uh, for, uh, for my database, uh, get, it from the, get it from my secret store. In my case, I'm using AWS secret store, and uh, call it whatever is the, the ID of this application dash password, right? And if my application was deployed as it wasn't, uh, this would pull the secret from AWS Secret Store, generate Kubernetes secret called something something dash password, and uh, my application would be able to connect to the database because it would have the secret with the authentication, which doesn't work in my demo today. Uh, hopefully it will work some other day. Uh, and that's how you use external secret store. It's very, very easy. It's just specified. This is where, behind the scenes, what you haven't seen is that there is, of course, another secret in my Kubernetes cluster that has authentication to my AWS account and what's or not. Will you bring the slides back, please? Yeah, you want slides? There we yes, go. Please. There are the slides. Ba -ba -da -da! Our hero's running in a more secure cluster. 
not really, but well, the QR code, <laughs> it was a good try. The QR code, so one on the left is um, for our YouTube show, and I also have lots of stickers up here on the stage, so please help yourself to a sticker, or if you see us around, ask for a sticker. On the right is a GitHub repo where you can do this demo on your own, and maybe you won't screw it up. And so if you do want to see these tools demoed, you'll actually see the demo from the very beginning since we've been doing this Choose Your Own Adventure project. But the, all the stuff we demoed today is in there. And that's a wrap. I think we have a time for one question if anyone has one. Except if the question is why the demo doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes? Thank you. I, I'll try to like concatenate my questions into one big one. Um, so firstly about admission policies, um, I, I believe you've given us a few options, right? Um, what I wanna know is if I can write YAML and Rego, um, that's not the deciding factor for me, let's say. Um, okay. Which one would you recommend um, between the ones that you've offered, right? Um, and then I also want to understand with these admission policies, um, is there a possibility that it slows down um, the requests coming into the cluster? Um, you know, let, let's say if everything is validating properly and you know, nothing's stopping it, uh, no rule is being uh, violated, um, is it actually slowing down the processes that are going on? Um, that's part of my first question. Wait, let Wait. Me I'm too old to remember two questions. Let me answer this one, <laughs> okay. and let then me, you ask the second, okay? I'll answer the first half, and you answer the second half. Between Kyverno and Rego, all else being equal. For one thing, they're both graduated projects, and they're both kind of converged into having a lot of the same features. Like, if one gets the features, the people who use the other one also want the features. So it, it, it's not too different. But in terms of readability, the Kyverno is so much better. And even though you can do both, all the people who might need to know what's happening in the cluster can't necessarily do both. And, um, and so therefore, I would choose Kyverno. There is additional thing that I like much more with Kyverno than uh, Gatekeeper is that when you create Kyverno policies, I, I wanted to show it in the demo, I couldn't, and something was rejected, you can describe that resource, that policy, and you will see in events Oh, somebody tried to do this and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Gatekeeper shows it in logs, which to me is not really uh, that easy to digest as, as events in Kubernetes resources, apart from what Whitney said. And the second half of his question is about whether it takes a much longer. You. Okay, so uh, incoming requests, if you mean request to your application, that should not be affected by uh, Caverno in any form of way, at least as far as I know. What might get affected is Kubernetes API itself, mm -hmm. right? It might take more time to process changes to your resources, right? Not specifically because uh, of Caverno itself, but because uh, Kubernetes API tends to struggle with a, with a massive number of resources, especially custom resources, so if you put a lot of policies uh, it might affect the speed of Kubernetes API itself. But that will not affect your applications. You might need to wait slightly longer, theoretically, when you do kubectl, get something, or apply, and things like that. But your application should be fine. All right, thank you. Second. Yes. Uh, are, are we finished? OK, we need to be finished with time. But you, you can find us afterward, and we're happy to answer the rest of your questions. All right, thank, thank you, you so you. much. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone.